Good morning. My name is Dale Bittner, and I am the Director of Faith Formation here at Our Savior Lutheran Church in West Lafayette, Indiana. If you're visiting with us this morning, we welcome you. And if you would like more information about our church, or if you would like to contact us, all of the information you need is available for you at the bottom of the screen. We would love to hear from you. Today is what is traditionally known as Holy Trinity Sunday. It's a Sunday in which we celebrate and contemplate this idea of a God who is revealed to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Another way of saying this is that we believe in a God who is a creator, a redeemer, and a sustainer. Now, there's a lot of mystery to that, to say that God is one God, yet revealed to us in three very distinct persons. And we could go through a lot of theological arguments and illustrations and different doctrines and ways of trying to show why that makes sense. And there's a place for that. But when we do that, we, we tend to miss the most significant truth of this idea of God as Trinity, and that's this. At the very heart of Christian faith is this beautiful truth. Relationships of love are what life is all about. See, the very fact that God reveals God's self to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit shows us that God is a relational God, and God has created us as relational beings. And that is something worthy to not only contemplate, but to celebrate and to be transformed by as we do that together. So please journey with us in the next hour or so this morning as we sift through all of this together as we worship our God. Let us worship the triune God. Let us worship the one who spoke in the beginning and created something out of nothing. Let us worship the triune God. Let us worship the one who took on the clothing of humanity to set those who were oppressed free. Let us worship the triune God. Let us worship the one whose spirit rests continually upon us, calling us from sorrow-filled endings to bright new beginnings. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us now confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. And through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Now let us sing together our gathering hymn, You Are Holy.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. pray. God of heaven and earth, before the foundation of the universe and the beginning of time, you are the triune God, author of creation, eternal word of salvation, and life-giving spirit of wisdom. Guide us to all truth by your spirit that we may proclaim all that Christ has revealed and rejoice in the glory he shares with us. Glory and praise to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 6. In the year the king Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two that he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, 
Your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please read with me Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord your gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due God's name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord all are crying, Glory! The Lord sits enthroned upon the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. A reading from the book of Romans, chapter 8. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who were led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. And Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? 
Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Well, I want to say, first of all, good morning to all of uh, the children out there. Good morning, boys and girls. Can I see some of you? Do I see you? Yeah? see a few of you there. Uh, None of you here this morning. I know a few of you are traveling, uh, so none of you here on the premises, but I see a few of you out out there, I believe, at least uh, in name. Well, I want to show you something exciting that I'm excited about. It's a, it's a picture that I've drawn, and uh, I've put a lot of time into it, and it's a very special picture. And so I've, I've drawn this picture and uh, have composed it myself, and I've brought it here today, and I want to show it to you. Does everybody want to see it? All right, you ready? All right, I'm going to get it here. You're going to, I'm going to be off camera for a minute. I've hidden it. All right, close your eyes. All right, everybody ready? All right, you can open them. Here it is. Well, I forgot to tell you, uh, it's not a finished picture. Crayons. Now, these are from the Crayola 96 crayons box. In fact, uh, this is from two of the 96 crayon boxes, and those are hard to find. In fact, uh, there was a color that was in there when I was a kid called raw umber, and there was another one called burnt sienna, and for some reason they did away with those two colors a long time ago, and then they brought them back, and those are in here. And so all of those colors are in here. Well, why did I call this a picture? It certainly doesn't look like a picture, does it? <laughs> it's not even close. Well, it's because in order to draw a picture, we have to have these things. In order to compose and color a picture, we have to have all of these different crayons, all made up of different colors. And this is almost 200 different colors. And That's kind of the way it is when God gives us a promise. Did you notice in the scripture that I just read, there's a part where Jesus talks about the Spirit, and he talks about the Holy Spirit as something very mysterious, and it is, something that we can't see. And that's why Jesus said it's like the wind. And he said that the the Spirit is like the wind because we don't see the wind, but we see the effects of the wind, and no one knows where it's blowing, but, but the wind goes where it will. And that's how it is when God gives us a promise. When God sends His Spirit into our lives, God promises to paint a picture with our lives, and not just with our individual lives, but with all of our lives together, with everyone here at our Savior Lutheran Church, with your family, with your friends. See, when you were baptized, the Bible says that you were baptized into Christ's church. And every single person in the church is different. It's like every single person is is a different one of these crayons. See, this one is is, uh, yellow-green, Verde Amarillo. This one is blue. 
This one is carnation pink. This one is metallic sunburst. And we need all of these different colors to come together and to eventually make an incredible picture, right? And so sometimes if you feel like you are all alone, or if you feel like maybe you don't know what you're supposed to do in life, and there will be times like that, just remember that God has made you a very special and unique person. And the other people in your life also are people that you need. And God has promised to use you and is slowly but surely using your life and the lives of everyone around you to make a beautiful picture and a beautiful painting. I borrowed these from my daughter, who is an artist, and um, she actually has much more fancy pens and pencils and all kinds of things that, um, <laughs> that she wouldn't let me bring today. <laughs> because they're, uh, they're much more expensive and, and delicate. Uh, but I'm always amazed that she can take something like this in a box and make it into an amazing picture of a person or of a place. And that's how it is with God when he gives us the Spirit. How about if I pray for you? Lord, we thank you so much for giving us your Spirit. We thank you for each child who is watching today and those who are unable to, uh, to be part of it, those who are traveling, those who perhaps aren't feeling well. We pray your blessings on them and their families. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. It's good to see everyone this morning. Well, Trinity Sunday is today, and it is, uh, you might call the first Sunday in what we would refer to as ordinary time in the church calendar, and it's sort of a strange holiday in the life of the church because it's really the only Sunday in the entire church calendar that is based upon a doctrine, all right, the doctrine of the Trinity, and we kind of don't know historically, and, and I mean going back a couple of thousand years, we kind of haven't known as a church exactly what to do with this whole doctrine of the Trinity, with God being one God, but being expressed in three persons. And every time, historically, when any person has ever really tried to explain it, they've always been branded as a heretic historically, and so we always have to be careful. But when I think of Trinity Sunday, I'm reminded of a particular incident that happened in my life during my second year of seminary. So this would have been in uh, the spring of 1998. I uh, was on my way to class, was just leaving my apartment and was walking across campus. And uh, I heard a voice uh, yell out to me, excuse me, sir, excuse me, sir, and I kept on walking because I, as far as I knew, my, my dad wasn't with me, uh, being only 22, 23 years old at the time, and then I kept hearing this voice get louder and louder, excuse me, sir, excuse me, sir, and finally the voice uh, was right behind me, and I felt someone grab my arm, and I turned around, and there was a, a man standing there, perhaps a couple of years older than me, and he said, could I have a moment of your time? And before I could answer, he said, uh, he said, I have a question. And he said, I don't know where else to turn. And I thought, well, that's kind of interesting that of all the places you could go for a question that you'd stumble onto a seminary campus. We, we don't really know much of anything. That's why we're in seminary, you know? We're, uh, and, and he, no, but he said to me, uh, he said, I'm, I'm dating, uh, I'm, I'm engaged to a young woman who, who I love very much, and he said, and, and uh, she is a devout Christian, and he said, and, and, and I'm not. He said, I'm, I'm trying to understand Christian faith, um, but I wasn't raised in Christian faith. It's very intriguing to me. I'm not, I'm not hostile to it, but I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to grasp it, and he said, and the biggest stumbling block to me is this idea of, 
of the Trinity, of, of the fact that you say you believe in one God, but that God is expressed and explained as a Father and as a Son and as a Holy Spirit. And, and I really have a hard time with that. And he said, can we, can, can you and I, can I take you to lunch and we can just go and talk about it? And he said, I, I live here locally and I just figured if, if I came onto the seminary campus, I could find somebody who studies theology and maybe could explain it to me. Now in my mind, I was thinking, well, I kind of need to get to class so I can uh, learn how to tell people about God. You know? <laughs> but I didn't say that. <laughs> so I said, sure. So he took me to lunch, and uh, we talked for quite some time. And he said to me, I I'm in great pain over this. Uh, I, I love this woman, but uh, I'm afraid that she's not going to marry me if I don't embrace her faith, but I just don't understand this idea of the Trinity. And so we talked for quite some time, and I espoused volumes of theological arguments for why the Trinity makes sense doctrinally and logically. At the end of that lunch, he thanked me, and I wished him well, and that was it. I don't know what ever happened to that young man, but as I look back on that day and that conversation, um, I wish I had done so many things differently. And namely, I wish that instead of trying to use so many theological and doctrinal arguments, I wish I had simply focused on the love relationship he had with this young woman and, and pointed out to him something that one of the greatest pastors, I think, in church history, St. Augustine, once said, and that's this. You see the Trinity when you see love. You see the Trinity when you see love. And, and what he meant by that is that if, if God is a triune God, then, then God by very nature is a God of love. God is a relational God. And whenever we see love taking place, we see the Trinity. See, you have to have a lover and a loved one, the person who is being loved, and then the love itself. The lover, the loved one, and the love itself. That's three. Now, we could talk a lot about the implications of that, but the main point of all of this, and what I wish I would have said those many years ago, is simply the fact that even though we can't fully understand all of that because it's a mystery, the fact is, it's good news. So in the next few moments, I simply want us to explore why is it good news that God is a triune God? Why is it good news that God is a triune God? The readings that we looked at today, I think, give us two quick reasons. Number one, if God is a triune God, you can find meaning in suffering. Now, when you, looked at, when you look at all of these readings, you notice that there was a narrative, essentially, in each one. In other words, you, you could see in each one this aspect of God being a creator, a redeemer, and a sustainer, you know, a father, a son, a Holy Spirit. But it wasn't simply laid out as a concept. It was laid out as as a narrative, you know, Jesus is explaining to Nicodemus that God loved the world so much that he sent a son into the world to give his life. And the Father and the Son together sent the Spirit into the world to breathe life into those who so desperately needed life. 
there, there's a narrative of, of suffering there, a, a father who knows what it's like to, to lose a son, a son who knows what it's like to suffer pain and loneliness, a spirit who goes into broken and ravaged places such as people with unclean lips, as Isaiah said. And the point of all of that is that there is no broken place where God does not dwell. We tend to think that to find God, we have to to find a place that is completely pure and completely devoid of all brokenness and pain and hardship. But according to the doctrine of the Trinity, according to these passages here, the places where God dwells, the very fact that God is triune is a reminder of the fact that God is a God who suffers with his people. God is a God who loves the world so much that he's willing not to stand aloof from us, not to condemn us for the messes that we get ourselves into, but to actually suffer with us. You know, one of my favorite writers is the writer C.S. Lewis. And when C.S. Lewis was, uh, was writing during his days in England, he was part of a writer's group known as the Inklings. And the Inklings consisted of himself, C.S. Lewis, another writer by the name of J.R.R. Tolkien, and another writer by the name of Charles Williams. They spent a lot of time together, writing, talking, going to the pub, laughing out loud together, spending time together. They loved each other. And when Charles Williams died, C.S. Lewis wrote about the experience and how it affected the the dynamic of the Inklings. And he said that when Charles Williams died, he said that selfishly he thought that what would happen is that now he would get more of J.R.R. Tolkien to himself. Because when there were three people in the group, sometimes one person always feels like the third wheel. And, and he said, now there were only two of us, so perhaps I could get to know Tolkien more and I would get more of Tolkien to myself. But he said, much to his astonishment, he found that he didn't get more of Tolkien, but he actually got less of Tolkien. He wrote about it and he said this, I found, strangely, that I will never get out of Tolkien the particular kind of laugh that only a Charles joke could get. (laughs) It's interesting, isn't it, that that no one person can bring out all of the different aspects of our personality. We, We need lots of people in our lives, and that's how it is when we are going through times of pain and suffering in particular. We need people around us to make us laugh. We need people around us to to dine with. We need people around us to to say to us in our pain, me too, I've been there as well. So it's good news that God is a triune God because if so, there is meaning. You can find meaning in suffering. But there's a second reason, and that's this. If God is a triune God, you can find unity in the midst of diversity. Now, one of the things that uh, is interesting, particularly in the reading uh, from the book of Romans uh, that you noticed, is that Paul says that All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God, for you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you've received a spirit of adoption 
And he speaks of coming into the Christian life as being adopted into a family, bearing witness with our spirit that we are all children of God, joint heirs with Christ. And he uses similar language when he speaks of our baptism in the book of Galatians. And he says, now, therefore, there is no longer Jew or Gentile or male or female or slave nor, nor free, but we are all one in Christ. Very fascinating. He reminds us that because of the work of God in us, we maintain our identity, who we are, yet the categories to which people try to, to peg us with no, no longer define us in such a way that would keep us out of the family of God. The Holy Spirit breaks those barriers that our minds tend to erect that, that try to, to make things so rigid. Yeah, Rachel Held Evans once said that the most offensive thing about the gospel, the most offensive thing about Christianity is not, it, it's not who it, lets, who it keeps out, but who it lets in. Because it lets us in. And the reason for that is that God as a trinity is a God who is, is free. Because it's a, he's a, God is a God who, who loves us, who longs to be with us. A God who doesn't define things in such black and white and, and rigid terms. But a God who loves diversity but a God who shows us that we can get along in the midst of diversity. And that's because the Trinity, God as Father, God as Son, and God as Holy Spirit is, is a divine dance of sorts. I'm reminded often of my sophomore year of high school when I was in the marching band in Virginia Beach. And uh, on this particular occasion in the fall, in uh, late fall of, I guess this would have been 1989, somewhere around there, uh, we, we played a song by, uh, by Earth, Wind, and Fire, and it was called In the Stone. <laughs> and uh, there was a segment towards the end of that song where uh, the drum line essentially had about a a one-minute solo of sorts. And it was written into that field show that the band director called all of us to simply set aside everything that we knew about marching and to simply dance to the music. And it was a very bizarre experience because everything about marching band that had been drilled into our heads. In fact, everything about marching in general has to do with uniformity. It has to do with everybody doing the same thing at the same time, in the same way, at the same exact moment, in the same rhythm. And we had gotten used to that. But on this particular moment, the band director said, for this particular minute in the song, the drum line plays, and it was a, it was a very non-marching kind of beat, you know, this... And he said, all of you instrumentalists, put your instruments down and just dance. And we tried it the first time, and he cut us off, and he said, what are you people doing? And he said... I asked you to dance, and somebody yelled out to him as we were rehearsing. As um, he was, the director was up in the in the bleachers, and someone said, "We don't know what we're supposed to do." And he said, "Just dance." And they said, "Yeah, but you haven't you haven't choreographed it for us." And he said, "Just do your own thing. Just go with the beat." And he said, "But that's not how marching works. We're supposed to all do the same thing." And the band director yelled back. Forget about marching for a minute. This isn't marching. It's a dance. 
And at that moment, everyone kind of said, oh. And we forgot about marching, and we simply danced. Now, my dad, who uh, spent his entire career in the military, came to that particular field show. <laughs> And uh, I asked him afterwards what he thought, and he said, you know that part at the end of the Earth, Wind, and Fire song where everybody just did whatever they wanted and did their own thing? He said, that was the best part. I said, Dad, that was the, that's the part that took the least amount of work. That's the part that was completely unscripted. And he said, yeah, but it just, it just worked because it seemed like there was such a unity, and yet everybody was doing their own thing. You see, that's how it is with the Trinity. The problem is I think we try to turn the Christian life into a march, into some kind of rigid uniformity where we expect everyone to be the same. When in fact, the Christian life is a dance where everyone is diverse and yet still made in the image of God. If God is a triune God, that's good news for us because it means we can find meaning in our suffering and we can have unity in diversity. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's stand together and sing our hymn of the day, Come Join the Dance of Trinity. Let us proclaim the faith of the church together in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, 
the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. We pray, O oh God, for your holy church around the world. Revitalize and renew us, that we may be reborn once again through the waters of baptism and the blowing wind of your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We give you thanks for your power revealed to us in creation, for cedar and oak trees, for rushing waters, for the echoes of thunder. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the nations and our leaders that, led by your spirit, they work towards a world where all of your children enjoy peace. We pray especially for the nation of India, where countless lives are in turmoil from COVID and from the effects of a recent cyclone. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the healing for all those who suffer, especially Candy, Jason, Phil, Shirley and Eric C., Rosalie, Jeff, Denise, Pastor Judy, Barb, Donna, Helmut and Carol, Kim, Alex, Victoria, Jennifer, Jeanette, Suzanne, Mike M., Carrie, Philip B., John, Shelby, Tamsin, Cheryl, Sandy, Eric M., and Judy. We pray also for the victims and survivors of trauma or violence. Give respite to those living with PTSD or any other mental health concerns. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for this worshiping community, that the splendor of your majesty and the holiness of your mystery may be glorified through our worship and our relationships with one another. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our, Hear our prayer. prayer. We give you thanks, O oh God, for those who have died in faith. We remember also those whose lives have been lost due to the horrors of war. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O oh God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace to those around you. And at this time, we will proceed with the offering and our offering hymn. We thank you again for all of the gifts and generosity you give to this church so that the ministry of the gospel can continue.
Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us, to, make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks and praise, almighty and merciful God. You reveal your glory as the glory of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your eternal glory. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after the supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor, glory, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, as you have taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So come to this table which now extends into our homes, you who have faith and you who would like to have faith. You who have been here often and you who have not been here for a long time. You who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed. It is Christ who invites us to meet him here. You may be seated. Just to remember.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's now sing our sending hymn, verses 1 and 4. blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. Thank you for joining us today. I hope it was a meaningful time of worship for you, and I hope that you will join us again next Sunday at the same time. And as you go throughout your week this week, go knowing that your Creator is also your Redeemer and your Sustainer. May God be with you until we meet again. Have a good week, friends.